Hey guys, hope everybody's having a good day out there today. Thanks for tuning back in to today's video. Much appreciated. And just been working on these fish the moment lake map breakdowns all day long. Gonna take a quick break here to do today's video. And today I want to give you guys uh, one of those tips that uh, some anglers will take heed and other people will not, depending upon where you're at in fishing, because there's two different types of anglers I found out that watch the channel here. They're the ones that are just looking for the quick fix bait type modification tips like that. And then there's other anglers out there that want to really dig into the the meat, the nitty gritty meaty stuff. And if you dig into that nitty gritty meaty stuff I'm, like I'm going to talk today, that's the thing that's going to make you become a great angler and make those big quantum leaps in fishing uh, versus if you just stick to bait colors and techniques and that type of stuff, it's going to allow your or it's going to keep your success rate growing, but growing very slow. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about the three phases that any great angler has to go through. If you're going to become a good angler, a great bass angler, you're going to have to go through every one of these phases in order to reach that, that next pinnacle, that next level. So I'm just going to go through all three of them here from the, and this is something that I've just developed out of my own experience. It's sort of a a, 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 an opinion of mine that I've based from my own experience, from my own, you know, evolution as an angler and from watching other people evolve as anglers. First thing that we go through, everybody does, the first phase is basically it's the foundations. And the foundations are becoming um, proficient at casting, proficient at trolling motor operation, um, being aware of lure categories, being comfortable and being familiar with all the different um, techniques that are out there as far as every technique that's available to catch fish. This is a basic uh, step that everybody has to go through in order to uh, to get to that next to get to the next level that we'll talk about. And this is something that, that really never stops. Um, you're always trying to become a better caster. You're always trying to become more agile and aware and uh, more proficient at trolling motor operation. And you never top, stop learning about new baits and new techniques, new colors, new lure categories. That's just sort of an ongoing process. But this is the first thing that you have to grasp in order to set a foundation as an angler. Now, the second thing that you have to go through that you have to master along with this is you have to master and you have to get into and fully understand the personalities of bass, the seasonal movements of bass, and the behaviors that they have. Because based upon where you're at in the country and the species of bass you're fishing for, smallmouth, uh, Kentucky bass, or largemouth, um, every single part of the country is going to have uh, bass characteristics unique to themselves. Um, if you fish in Sam Rayburn in Texas, uh, the bass are going to be completely different there, the way they behave and how they set up than if you fish someplace like Lake Norman in North Carolina. All over the country is going to be like that. And now, if you're a tournament angler, you're going to have to learn. It's even going to be even more complex. You're going to have to learn those movements and patterns of bass all over the country. That's, that's the big difference between somebody that fishes locally and somebody that's a touring professional. But for most anglers, I think most anglers that probably watch this channel, we're not talking about two or anglers. We're talking about a lot of you guys out there, you fish either for fun or maybe you fish, you know, local or regional events. Um, so you're going to have to really get a full understanding of the, the mood and the personality, how bass relate to different weather changes, how they relate to different water clarity changes, temperatures, where they're at at different times of the year, um, where they are in normal conditions, how they're affected. If you have some uh, oddball condition like high water, low water, <clears throat> muddy water, that type of stuff. There's learning the environment that the bass live in. And this, this sort of is, is the stage, this, this to me, in my opinion, these are the two stages that most people stagnate at. They, they learn the basic foundations of fishing and they learn the basic foundations of where to look for bass. And you never stop though. I mean, you're always learning something about bass behavior and movement, but most people don't go to step three. Step three that I'm talking about is the most important step in taking that huge leap be become between becoming just an average bass angler and a great bass angler. And that is 
getting into the more mental, abstract, instinctual, intuitive parts of fishing, and which is my favorite topic, and which is the topic that gets the least amount of interest on my channel. Every time I talk about it, guys, if I talk about the mental part of fishing, and I talk about the instinctual part of fishing, 75% of you dudes out there just tune out of it. And I'm telling you right now, don't tune out of it. Because if you tune out, when I talk when I talk to you about the most important part of fishing, if you tune out of it, you're taking yourself away from a tremendous amount of potential excess. That's like if you're making a cake and you forget to put the sugar in it or something. I mean, it's the same thing. So I would, I would highly encourage everybody anytime that I talk about the mental part of fishing to keep to, to keep your your ears wide open on that thing because it's it's going to have a huge part in a you know your success on it and when I'm talking about the mental part of it I'm talking about and this is the key this is what separates a average angler from a great angler you have got to be able to make decisions on the water based upon how you feel not because not from a, an intellectual, rational point of view. You have to trust how your instincts and your intuitions feel on the water. If you if you're not catching fish and something doesn't feel right, or if it just or if it feels right, one of the two, you have to trust yourself a little bit to incorporate that instinctual feeling you get as an angler along with the just the, the mechanics of it. And what I mean by that is say, for example, you're fishing down a stretch of bank and um, say you're, you're not catching them that great. I mean, everything looks great, but for some reason you're just not catching them and you feel like you just, you're just casting. And when you get to that point there, you, you, you can't keep just casting. You have to make some type of a change and some type of a move, whether it be area or technique. Because the thing in bass fishing, you have got to feel that every single bite, or excuse me, every single cast that you make, you're expecting to get bit. You're expecting every single cast to feel that strike, to feel that, you know, fish load up on that crankbait or whatever. If you ever get in the point where you think that you don't expect that cast, then you're not doing something right. And this is what this is the, the most one of the most important elements I can talk to you guys about is trusting and getting awareness of that feeling out there. Another thing about that is um, you've got to be able to fish. The, the, you've got to be able to fish the conditions and take advantage of the conditions and give yourself the opportunity to capitalize on things that are unfolding on the lake. Good example I'll be talking about. Say say for example you. Uh, you're, you know, you've got a pattern where you're catching them on main lake points and you're just running and gunning main lake points. And then say you're running down the lake and uh, all of a sudden you, you pass a boat dock and you, and you think to yourself as you're running past that boat dock, it's like, man, that dock looks pretty good back there. I probably should go back and fish it. A lot of times you'll say, nah, it's not worth it. I'm just not, I'm not going to turn the boat around and go back and make five casts on that dock. If you get a feeling that you want to do something, don't second guess yourself on that feeling. I don't care if it's to leave an area or if it's to pull over an area and make a couple casts. If your first instinct tells you to do something, I don't care if it's changing a bait color or whatever, you got to go with that because normally your first instinct is the correct instinct. And if you start second guessing yourself and uh, you know try to rationalize the thought or feeling that you have, a lot of times you're just not going to, you're not going to capitalize on, you know, the potential you have out there. And once you get familiar with this, this is what I'm talking about. This is some, it doesn't sound like it, but it's a high level method of fishing because when you're fishing out there, the only way that you can see this stuff work is by trusting yourself. And the only way that you can trust yourself to make the right decisions is you have to have some type of reproductible result that you've seen your decisions pay off in the past. And in my own case, after analyzing this a lot of times, I realized that if I tried to second guess something or I, if I tried to overanalyze or rationalize something, a lot of times I didn't do any good. But a lot of times if I just acted on my instinct and my intuition about making a move or not making a move, sometimes it's been, I've been fishing out there and I'm not catching nothing and 
I'm just, there's no sign of life. I'm not catching anything, but I just feel like I'm going to. I just feel like it's just a matter of time before I'm going to get on these fish. And sometimes that happens like that. You'll stay with it. So it goes both ways. But one of the things that comes with bass fishing, and the only way this thing comes, guys, is through time on the water and through experience, is trusting yourself to make those decisions that aren't that obvious to make. And it's and it's a lot of times it's just trusting your instincts and your intuition. That's part of the reason I named this channel Intuitive Angling, because there's so much to, to learn as far as the intuition side of it that uh I know it's the most important part of fishing. It's the and like I said, it's it's the it's the part of fishing that gets the least amount of interest in it. There's so much in there. The what I just told you guys is very, very basic one on one stuff that a lot of people know. There's so much more to it. But and I'd love to do more videos on it, but every time I do a dang video on it, nobody wants to watch the thing. I mean, you'll get some of the hardcore dudes that understand it that will, but most everybody out there is like my biggest video was how to mod that, that I've ever had on my channel was how to how to modify a wacky rig, you know, just a bait modification tip. And if I do one, you know, on some type of, you know, intellectual or some type of intuitive, instinctual, uh, revolutionary, uh, you know, approach to fishing that's really going to help your fishing, there's just nobody that watches it. So it's sort of a backward deal, but I guess that's just, that's just the way it is. I know that everybody out there, they want quick instant results. They want, they, they, that's why bait videos get the most views is because it, it's instant gratification. And as a society, we get sucked into instant gratification way too much. It doesn't matter what it is, but if, you know, one piece of advice that I'll, you know, share with you guys here is that I'm always going to try to to play some of these videos like this I'm talking about on the mental side in my video catalog here and just pay close attention to them because I'm not just saying this stuff to hear myself talk. It's stuff that's really going to make you become a better angler. And, uh, you know, it just depends on how dedicated or devoted you are to wanting to be reach your fullest potential as an angler. Some guys don't care. I mean, some guys are just... They're just, you know, satisfied to go out there and just have a kickback on Saturday. And, you know, if they catch them, fine. If they don't catch them, and that's great too. But if you want to reach your fullest potential as an angler, you're going to have to incorporate those three things that I just said there. Your your basic foundation, your casting, your lure recognition, bait categories, you know, your seasonal movements and personality of fish, uh, you know, knowledge and the mental side of it. So, Anyway, guys, that's today's video. Hope it helped out a little bit. I'm going to get back on these maps here. And by the way, check them out, man. Go to fishamoment.com. Uh, check out the lake map breakdowns. Man, this is some good stuff here. Put a lot of work into it. And we'll see y'all later.